So, I'm just gonna be right up front and honest from the beginning. I got a lot of good things to say about this car. This is probably the most high-tech and impressive luxury electric car I've ever seen. Actually, it is, because I've tested some others that would be close. The Lucid Air would be close. Things like the Maybach, things like the Bentley Flying Spur. I'd take this over all of them, okay? And that says a lot. So let's just get right into it. I'm, I'm gonna hopefully try to cover everything that is so impressive about this car. I might miss some stuff, but let's just start with the basics. So BMW i7, not the first BMW that I've tested on this channel. And so it's not the first one with this crazy look at the front. It kind of grows on you, but whatever, we'll focus on that later. The point though is the basics are, it's a full size luxury sedan long sedan just like you've seen with these other luxury ones huge hood it's longer than a cadillac escalade but with that they move all the electronics up to the front pretty good amount of trunk space huge back seat huge front seat and it's got dual motors rocking around 530 horsepower it'll do a zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds so it's not slow by any means um, and at a full charge, I'm seeing about 270 to 280 miles of range. I looked on their website and it's showing things like 300 to 320, but I think in uh, winter you'll probably expect to get a little less. This is the way it's designed. I would personally never get this color, but I get that people who are buying this car probably don't mind that. You can see the tail lights here are these like little slots. Of course, it's still the classic BMW logo with one of the cameras here on the back. And if you want to open the trunk, I'll just go ahead and show you right off the bat. Pretty good amount of trunk space. Not the biggest opening here. I tried to put a box in here and it was a little bit tight, but it still worked. And you have sub trunk space too for all your charging equipment if you want to put it down there. So that's nice. And that is your trunk. So nothing too shocking there. It is automatically opening and closing. And then you get around to the side. I mean, it's not a surprise that this car has a ton of room, but what's inside really that's impressive is the tech. And I kind of just want to get to that. I mean, we could talk about the outside. You want to talk about the wheels here? Big wheels, 21 inch wheels front and back. Pretty big brakes as well. Oh, it has these crystal headlights. Look at these. DRLs are all crystally, kind of like the Flying Spur again. Then these inset real headlights back here. And uh, squinting pig is what I'll call it. Kind of looks like a squinting pig. Now when I was talking about competitors earlier, you know, full size luxury sedans, big four door sedans that are aiming to be soft and cushiony and comfortable much more than they are supposed to be sporty. So maybe a standard Model S, a Lucid Air, um, or a Maybach. I think the Lucid and the Tesla are much sportier and firmer, even at their softest settings, than this is. And the Maybach is kind of a match with this, and the Flying Spur is somewhere in between. I would take this over all of them, and I mean that when I say it. And that's half because of how comfortable it is, but there's so much tech inside that it's kind of incredible. So let's just get right into that. So it actually starts with the door. So this is the door handle here. You can hit that button right there and it'll pop open a little bit, but also it will completely open the entire door and it has sensors to know exactly how far it can open based on if there's a car next to you or something like that. So let's try that again. So it closes by itself. If I'm not next to the car, hit that button, checks, now there's not next, nothing next to it, so it opens all the way. That's pretty fire. You get in the car. If I want to close the door, I put my foot on the brake, and it closes for me. That's already pretty solid. If you want to open it automatically, you hit that button right there. It's capacitive, which is kind of annoying, but it does the same thing. And I kind of, I kind of just want to do that every time. Now this is for sure. 100% one of the cars that I would rather be in the back seat than the front seat. But if we're gonna get it, we might as well talk about being in the front seat. And to be fair, it's a very comfortable, solid experience. I, I was looking at these seats before, they kind of, they say leather because this top half is leather, but then the bottom half is cloth. And I was a little bit confused by the cloth decision because that's, I mean, it's comfortable, but it doesn't really feel quite as luxurious as the ones that are all full leather. So I'll at least mention that. Uh, but this this carpeting here is super soft, like everything around me is comfortable. The headliner is soft, Alcantara, everything is really well built. And it almost goes to the extreme as far as like comfort and quietness where like, it doesn't do frameless windows. It does these big, huge framed windows to have incredibly good noise isolation on the inside. 
I can have a whisper, I tested this, a whisper quiet conversation at 50 miles an hour. It's so quiet. Just talking like this. Because the road is so silenced as you're driving that you don't even hear potholes at 50 miles an hour at highway speed. So you look around here at the basics. The steering wheel, pretty nice, comfortable, leather. Couple buttons over here, couple buttons over here, cruise control stuff. You've got these air conditioner vents, and let's just look at these for a second. They are capacitive, so you can slide this little indicator on how much or how little air you want, or just tap, which I don't love. It still feels like I have to look to make sure I confirm exactly where I got it, but at least it's pretty responsive. And then there's this dial thing right here that lets you point the air wherever you want. So that sort of system works well. I just accidentally opened the door. That's probably why you don't want capacitive buttons. But that's a sort of theme you see everywhere. There is a lot of metal and there is a lot of leather, but there also is a lot of glossy plastic, especially here in the middle. We've, we've talked about this stuff in BMWs before. This light, this uh, crystal thing, the light comes in, it shines, it bounces like little rainbow reflections all over the car through the prism. It is what it is. This start-stop button is kind of annoying. If I'm gonna nitpick, uh, I wish it wasn't so glossy because there's just a bunch of fingerprints that are going to accumulate around here. But wireless charger up here, out of the way, not a distraction for the driver. Two cup holders, some storage, and some USB-C ports in there. And of course, a door storage, your handle, and all the window controls and child lock and stuff over here. And then seat controls, lock and unlock. Good to go. Here's your two screens up front with BMW's newest iDrive system. This one is actually kind of interesting because if you want to switch up what you see behind the steering wheel, which is, this is the uh, the AR mode, which would overlay directions on top of the road, but that's only when you're using the built-in navigation system. You also have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wirelessly, which I much prefer. Um, but that's at least here. There's also a really good HUD. You can see where it would pop up right there. And you can choose what displays on the HUD and on this layout down here whenever you want. So it's pretty good. It's, it's responsive. It's straightforward. All this stuff makes sense to me. And so that's sort of just a moot point. Like there's other stuff happening with BMW software and there's all kinds of crazy tech still. This up here, it's got a sensor so that I can do this and the volume changes. I told you guys this is not something I would want to do while driving, but the fact that it works is kind of neat. So there's that. You can change the sound of the car's acceleration to an uh, iconic Hans Zimmer sound, and he actually composed the sounds for this car. Like there is just a crazy amount of customization and luxury and tech just in the front seat. And briefly, the driving experience, like I said, is super luxury focused. So very soft, very quiet absorbs potholes. It has three and a half degree rear wheel steering, super, super lightweight steering. So I mean, you're driving around and it feels like you're barely connected to the road at all. You're just kind of floating over the top of it, which is, I guess, how you'd want to be limousined around, especially if you're in the back seat, which we'll get to. Um, but there's one other thing I kind of wanted to mention, and I never thought I would say this out loud, but the voice assistant in this car is actually pretty good. It's pretty decent. Okay, it does things like, so you use the keyword, hey BMW, close the roof shade. Closing the roof roller blinds. And it's pretty responsive, pretty quick, and pretty good at knowing what I actually want it to do. And it can do a surprising amount of things in the car. It can change your drive mode. It can turn up and down the volume. It can activate the massage seats, the heated seats, change the temperature in the car, all the basic stuff you'd want to do. So if the capacitive stuff happening on the dash is a little too much, yeah, the voice assistant is pretty good. There are microphones all throughout the car so that it knows which seat the voice is coming from. So if I'm in the back seat and I say, hey, assistant, close or open my shade, Without even saying what seat you're in, it will close or open your shade because it knows what seat the voice is coming from. It's it's kind of good. Most underwhelming piece of luxury in this car by far is the speakers. These are the Bowers and Wilkins speakers, so they're an optional upgrade, I believe. There are speakers like subwoofers in the seats. There are also speakers in the headrests, and there are speakers all around the cabin, and they are very average sounding, mediocre sounding. I much prefer, I mean, the Mybox speakers were incredible, but pretty much any other set of speakers has sounded just as good as, if not better than these. But that's enough talking about the front seat. I want to show you <laughs> the tech in the back seat of this car because it is 
on another level. So let's hit that button right there and hit that button right here. This one, same deal. Everything's automatic as you'd expect. And let's hop into the biggest back seat you could possibly need. And this is the automatic close button right here. Ooh. So, <laughs> where do I begin? I mean, obviously, I, maybe it's not obvious, tons of leg room, pretty good amount of headroom, lots of ambient lights everywhere. Don't forget about the microphones. Um, but in general, it's really soft and comfortable. This could be a three-seater in the back, but I don't really think you want to put a second person in the back. These are the executive back seats. So these are the two sort of fully reclining jet-like seats. And in the middle, I'd probably just stick to having this armrest right here because you also get hidden cup holder, wireless charger, and then a whole bunch of storage in there and two USB-C ports. There is still a lot of cloth, you know. This is all soft cloth. This part is leather. There's a cloth, and the seats are at like 60-70% cloth, and then have some leather up here. Super soft headrest right there. Uh, hidden USB-C ports in there for charging as well. You've got your HVAC adjustment right here. But you've probably noticed this already, so let's just get into it. There's a screen here. Each of the passengers has an entire screen instead of having a tablet in the back. And I kind of like this setup instead of like the tablets that we've seen that are detachable because they allow you to control everything about your specific seat's experience. What would you control about your seat experience? Your climate control, your blinds, right? So there's blinds in the back seat here. If I hit that little button, pops up the blinds, which is kind of like a shade slash tint mechanism, which is kind of fire. You also have the roof shade. You can control all that stuff. But of course there are modes for the back seat too. And when I hit theater mode, it puts all of these shades up and drops down a 30 inch 8K touchscreen to watch movies and videos in the back seat. So this has to boot up. It does this whole dramatic booting sequence and because all the shades are down now, everything is much more visible. If the shade was up, it would be more reflective like you see the reflection over there. But it does this boot up sequence and it is an Amazon Fire Stick UI. So this car has its own SIM card, its own data connection. So when you connect it to your cell phone plan, it's like another device, like an iPad or something like that. And so it can automatically always be connected to the internet and you can always stream the way you could from a Fire Stick because that's what the UI is. Now, if I can nitpick a little bit on the 8K touchscreen in the back, UI is really the only challenge with it. And that's really most of this car. Like there's so much tech but the UI is a little tricky. Basically, this is the Fire Stick UI in the middle, and then you have a touchscreen on either side, which right now is just the time and the weather. So, I don't know, you kind of put that over to the side. Then when you want to change stuff about the display, you do most of the controls over on the touchscreen on the left, right? Okay, change aspect ratio to 32 by nine, make it ultra wide, or 16 by nine, or change the volume by swiping up and down, change where it is in the car. Maybe I'm the only one watching a movie, put it back in the middle for everyone. All of that is from the side, right? But if I wanna actually play with this part, then you, you this, this part, it's a little bit janky. Sometimes it responds well, sometimes it doesn't, but you can fire up a movie, or you can sort of use this uh, remote experience over here by jumping into the UI and knowing where to go. Fire TV, continue. And now this uh, up and down arrow can switch menu items and scroll between things because this is the, the remote. I, it's kind of annoying to have to jump through all this stuff and get through all the hoops. It should sort of automatically know I wanna do that and jump me there. Either way, Let's fire up, uh, I hear this is a pretty good movie, so Top Gun, okay, maybe resume, Top Gun, there we go. And we're into the movie, and the speakers would be booming, and the shades are down, and we see everything in glorious high definition. Also, they say it's 8K, I can't verify that it's 8K, this is streaming from Amazon Fire Stick, I don't even think that can stream in 8K, I think that's just sort of a marketing number they can throw out at us but it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks pretty good for the screen in the back of a car. <laughs> so, you know, I don't hate this. This is, There's also an on-screen remote button like that, so you can scroll up and down with this remote here. You can move this over, go back home, hit back. I mean, it, it, 
it works, okay? It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Hopefully you don't have to do a whole lot of navigating through menus. You just kick back and pull up YouTube and watch a video and you're fine. It's not fast at all either, as you can tell. Um, but it works. And you can pull up a Forest Auto Reviews video and watch it in 4K on the screen. Matter of fact, I don't think you can do that in the YouTube app. It's telling me I have to use the uh, built-in controls here and pull it up with the remote. So as you can see, the UI is not the friendliest part, but it's just like this car has a screen in the back. I don't know how else to explain that that's, that's something I've never seen before and it's a giant screen and it's super useful. <laughs> like I just wanna reach over and hit the skip add button that's under there, but that doesn't work. It has to use the remote and then I have to skip with this to hit that. So that's the only challenge. That's literally the only challenge is UI. Now I didn't even show you lounge mode. This is one more crazy thing you can do with this executive back seat. Uh, okay, so there is modes. Now I'm just gonna go, I wish this was another mode in here because when you go to my modes, there is no lounge mode. I think relax mode might do something close to it. Nothing really changed. It's kind of unclear what these modes are actually going to do. Obviously theater mode does this, but if you go to the seats, in the executive back seat and you see that button right there, go ahead and hit that and wait for about 30 seconds for this seat, this front seat here to move all the way up to basically touch the windshield. This automatically happens on motors. <laughs> this is obviously also going to be difficult for, well, maybe the driver doesn't really care, but this seat moves all the way up. This footrest motorizes out this kind of pumps up as you'll see start to move my feet in a second and it leans me all the way back and sort of creates this ultimate passenger princess experience which i am totally cool with so what's that about 30 seconds we just got everything set up this entire thing is is laid out i am destroying the rear visibility <laughs> for the driver right now and also his side visibility because now this seat is in the way of him seeing that mirror but i am so comfortable I don't even, I don't even, officer, I'm chilling. I'm chilling right now. I just wanna remind you, this is half the price of the Maybach. This is undercutting a Lucid Air. This is undercutting a uh, Mercedes S-Class. This is undercutting the Tesla Model S Plaid. This, uh, no, not the Plaid. The Plaid is about 105. This is about 120 to start. But this, this is a crazy back seat and it's, it's kind of just a part of the way it's built in. You can get driven around in this car all the time. I would prefer to be driven in this car instead of driving it. So I guess it's time for a, a conclusion. So I have to get out of my super comfortable back seat to, to go over this. But um, I think the point here is uh, I like a lot of things about this car. There are some quirks that you start to get to when you actually live with it. Things like the fact that the front seat has to be up a certain amount in order for the back seat user to actually use that display. Look at, th <laughs> this looks insane. Um, I also don't think it's the prettiest car in the world, but hey, to each his own, you know? There's some pigs out there that would love this. Um, but honestly, I'm thinking, this all comes down to the fact that this is still one of the best types of vehicles to go electric. This is what I was saying in the Bentley video, which is like, okay, you want to make a large, luxurious four-door sedan, right? What do people want when they buy those? They want it to be comfortable, obviously. They want it to have a lot of space. They want it to be quiet. They want it to be smooth. And they already know it's going to be heavy and it's going to be expensive. Okay, well, that seems perfect to go electric because now you end up with this, which is the quietest possible version, obviously. It's the smoothest possible version to drive. There's also a faster M70 version that does like a three and a half seconds zero to 60 in case you're into that. But it's, it's still expensive and it's still heavy and it's the best version of everything. And it's also, they, they put all the tech in this thing with the executive back seat. And I think they did a good job. I don't know, let me know what you think. Is there anything you don't like about the M70 version of this other than this? I'm super curious. This might be the best luxury sedan on the planet right now. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.